everybody, welcome back to another episode of Discipleship Discussions. I'm here with the one and only Carrie Elder. Hello. And we need to first, before we do anything else, draw attention to this beautiful pink background mm. on mm -hmm. the set. That we surprised Rob with today. Yes, Apparently, I just found out a few minutes know. ago. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's very different. Yeah. You like it, right? I, it's my. I think we should keep it. We should keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's yeah. what are we? What's... Yeah. So this is our set for our brunch videos that we're shooting right now, and we didn't have time to change it, and so we just thought we'd just do it Stick together. With it. Yeah. Stick with yeah, it. Yeah. So we're sitting on the couch. I almost wore a, a pink polo <laughs> this morning. I'm glad I didn't. That would have been. You would have disappeared into. I that would have. Yes. Would have been awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this. Sunday, mm -hmm. kicking off a uh, series on the book of Ephesians. And one of the things that's unique about this series is we have both our middle school and high school ministry that are tracking with us through the entire series. So Dylan and Nick are going to be uh, preaching through the this letter with us. And uh, it's, it's interesting. One of the things that we're encouraging uh, any of you that are parents to do is to engage your kids mm -hmm. in conversations about the scriptures because research shows that if you engage your kids in conversations about the Bible, about God, about Jesus, the chances of them keeping their faith when they are adults increases by 66%. Wow. So it's not necessarily me or their youth pastor that makes the difference. It's conversations that you're having with your kids. So mm -hmm. at the end of every message, we're going to have uh, one question posted on the screen. You can take a snapshot of it. And uh, we want to encourage you to engage your kids if you've got middle schoolers or high schoolers in some of those conversations. But for today, we're jumping in to Ephesians chapter 1. That's right. And Carrie is going to read for us okay. uh, verses 1 through 14. Okay. So we start with verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the, in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as we plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory." In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. There is so much theology and doctrine packed into uh, this this passage. In mm -hmm. fact, in the original Greek, this is uh, this is the longest sentence in the Bible. It and, felt like that while I was reading. Yes, it's like, yeah, it it's like there's no there's end. no there's pause. No, it no. just keeps going. Mm -hmm. And once Paul kind of gets on a roll, he just he just keeps rolling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's so much in here, and the the thing that uh, you know on, on Sunday we're talking about is the idea that he has blessed us, so it's mm -hmm. past tense. For those of us that are in Christ, he has blessed us mm -hmm. with every spiritual blessing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, there's there's so much in there. And then he actually goes on, and to some degree, he kind of lists out what some of those blessings are. Right. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things that is I think that Paul is addressing to the church in Ephesus is they are living in a very, very 
plur pluralistic uh, culture. It was sort of it was a huge trade city, one right. of the major trading ports, uh, the primary trading port for Asia Minor. Um, they had the largest temple, uh, one of the seven wonders of the world, the temple to um, the goddess Artemis or Diana. Um, and, and so there were all kinds of pagan practices happening mm -hmm. all around these churches that were in Asia Minor. And this letter likely would have been circulated to all those different churches. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that is the reason for Paul's writings is to encourage believers that are in that region um, to, to to encourage them and to remind them of all the riches that Christ has blessed them with. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think it applies to us today, especially things that are unfolding in For sure. not only in our world, but in our country. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I, I think this is a, a very a needed letter mm -hmm. for for believers today yeah. as well. Yeah. And you mentioned in your message that we um, it, he wasn't focusing on what they were doing wrong, but to look at who we are in Christ. Yes. And I was thinking, you know, that saying where if you to look for a counterfeit, you know, mm -hmm. you look at the real thing. The real thing. Over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah, the bank that, tellers, they, yeah. they train them by feeling real money. Yeah. So when they feel a fake one, they yeah. can tell the difference. And that's, yeah. that is what a lot of this reminds me of because mm. it's just completely, it's not a, like you said, it's not him coming after something they're doing wrong, but just yep. reminding them because then that causes us to walk in it. Yes. You know? Yeah. And there, you know, it's interesting too because in like in the Corinthian church, he very clearly writes to correct some horrendous right. behavior mm -hmm. that's happening within the church. Mm -hmm. And yet here, he he is, um, you know, to encourage is to build courage into somebody. Mm -hmm. So he's he's trying to put courage in these Ephesian mm -hmm. believers to by reminding them of who they are uh, and and trusting that as they grasp those things, they're going to be able to live. Um, in alignment with Christ and His kingdom in a in a in a pagan world, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I, I'm curious, Carrie, as you as you read through this passage, what as as you think about like every spiritual blessing, mm -hmm. what are some of those things that you see in, in in the scripture? Yeah, it's you know when we're reading this portion. Um, it talks, I was like, well, what is the spiritual blessing? What What is it? We know we are so blessed with eternal life, with mm -hmm. forgiveness, grace that we don't deserve. And so these are these are blessings, you know, because you also have, sometimes I think people can um, get kind of confused with spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. spiritual blessings, yeah. spiritual, you know, and then Paul goes on later in the passage that you'll probably talk about next week of He's praying for other things, more wisdom, mm -hmm. more. But yet in verse um, 9 here, it says that making known the mystery of his will. Mm -hmm. That one to me kind of settles pretty strongly because I think everybody struggles with what am I supposed to be doing? <laughs> you know, what is his will? Am I doing something wrong? Am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. And this gives me so much hope that, you know— um, he can guide us yep. and we can trust that he can show us what to do, what to say, give us, um, you know, the Holy Spirit guides us in so many things. And that's a blessing to me, aside from the grace that he's given us, yes. you know? Yeah. I mean, what would you say yeah. as far as what is a spiritual blessing? Like, yeah. what stands out to you? Yeah. I mean, the, the, it's interesting to to contrast because a lot of times in in our world, like we the way the way we use the word blessing, oftentimes we're talking about um, material things. Mm -hmm. Like God has, you know, He's blessed me with uh, with a house or with a car or with you know a good hair day or whatever <laughs> it is. You know, so we 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 talk about blessings in a in a in a certain way, but Paul here when he's talking about every spiritual blessing, he's he he's not talking about material blessings, although those th God does bless us with those things. Right. He's drawing people's attention to the spiritual blessings that we have, no matter what our material circumstances, circumstances yeah. are. Mm -hmm. 
And, and I think it's a good reminder, you know, as we think about, okay, how has Christ blessed us? And some big themes that are, that Paul writes about here is that we've been adopted. Mm -hmm. We've been chosen. Mm -hmm. Um, and in fact, it says we've been chosen before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. which is mind blowing. Like how was, you know, and, and so God is outside of time mm -hmm. and before he ever created Adam and Eve, he knew us and chose us. Yeah. And, um, and it, it, it's, it's a, it's a testament of how God views his children. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. then that results to me, like then that, you know, he's not right here listing peace, you know, in this exact passage, but it's like, that's what produces peace yes. because, and that's the whole point to yes. me is like, we can say, you know, the passage of, um, you know, what we've received for eternal life and all of that and our forgiveness, but it's like, that's results in peace, which yes. then in our world, it's like, that's reduces depression that Anxiety. reduces all of these things that yep. are totally coming into our world on a daily basis. Yes. And it's like, it's the reason we can have the peace and joy, even no matter what our yes. circumstances, you know? Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, when we think about spiritual blessings, um, an easy parallel is to go to, okay, well, what, what are the spiritual blessings? And it's easy to jump to, well, what's the fruit of the spirit? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you've got love, joy, peace, patience, kind, you know, you've got, you've got the, the, the fruit there and it is the byproduct of knowing and trusting mm -hmm. in these, these truths that yeah. Paul is setting forth. So we've been chosen, we've been adopted, we've been redeemed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember years ago, um, I was, this is before I was a believer. Uh, I I uh, was on a a trip in, in Ocean City, Maryland, and parked my car illegally somewhere, mm. and my car got I've towed. I've never done that. Never, yeah, Just of kidding. course. I have. <laughs> so so I, the, I wake up the next day and I go to get my car and it's gone, and I've got to go find the you know where mm -hmm. where they towed my car. Yeah. And I walk in and there's a there's a sign that says Redemption Center. <laughs> and so and so that I you know I pay the money. <laughs> Because they're essentially they're holding my car yeah, ransom, ransom, you know, yeah. and so I have mm -hmm. to pay the price mm -hmm. in order to set my car <laughs> free from captivity, and and uh, and and then they stamp the receipt that says redeemed, <laughs> and it's like my car has been redeemed, you know, and so I, I think like even that idea that Christ has paid the price, we were held captive, mm -hmm. he paid the price, mm -hmm. we've been redeemed, mm -hmm. um, and then. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, just that phrase of being held captive. I think, you know, we've been held captive in our sin and, you know, it hell, right? We've mm -hmm. been redeemed from that. But mm -hmm. in today, we can be redeemed from all these things that the enemy wants to rip us off from. Yep. You know, um, it's there already in us. And so whatever the enemy is trying to keep us from and held us captive in, yes. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. those fruits of the spirit that we feel like maybe we're not quite there, you know, why can't I get there with peace or joy or whatever? Mm -hmm. You know, it is a lot of times when I pray for people, I'm praying that, you know, to break off the enemy because I, what's already inside of them to come, you know, to fruition yes. in their lives. And because we do grow in those areas. Yeah. I think, yeah. Know? Well, and, and it points to that because it says, one day he's going to unite all things in him. Mm -hmm. And there's this idea that God, yes, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, but we're not all walking in yes. every spiritual blessing. Mm -hmm. And so there are days when we're, you know, we're going through life and we're feeling discouraged or down or, or you know, we're, we're struggling with depression or anxiety mm -hmm. or worry about yeah. something. And so, you know, then the, the question becomes, okay, if these, th if God has already blessed me with all of these things, how do I walk in them more fully? Mm -hmm. And I think what Paul is putting forward here is, is when you read through this passage, the number of times or variations of this where he's saying in Christ, mm -hmm. in him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's recognizing that our life, Colossians says this, our life is hidden with God in Christ. Mm -hmm. And we're encouraged to put on Christ. 
And it's just a reminder that when God looks on you, he doesn't see, if you are in Christ, he doesn't see your sin. He doesn't see your flaws, your failures, your imperfections. Mm -hmm. He sees the beauty, the holiness, the perfection of his own son. Mm -hmm. And and it allows you to, to receive from God an identity that nothing else in this world can give you. Mm-hmm. And that is how, I think that's how we appropriate here and now every spiritual blessing. Yes. It's remembering mm-hmm. who we are in Christ, that we are chosen, we're adopted, mm-hmm. we're beloved, we're, you know, we're, we're, um, we're redeemed, we're forgiven, uh, we're empowered by his Holy Spirit. I mean, there, there's so many beautiful realities that in the day-to-day moments of life, we just kind of easily forget. Right. And I, I, I think that's why this book is so, so powerful and such a good mm-hmm. reminder for us today is to say, don't, don't settle for um, just a mediocre, just kind of scraping by sort of not only life, but life in Jesus. I mean, it's, he's got so much more for us. Yeah. Um, and, and his intention for us is not to live defeated. The victory, the, the victory is, is already there. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of us remembering and meditating on and thinking on it until it begins to to change us and shape yeah. us. And maybe that's a question for everybody. It's like, what are you scraping by? Yeah. What is what do you feel like you are where are you settling? Where is your car held captive? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well, can I do a little brunch plug? Yeah, go for if it. If you're not registered for brunch, May 13th, please come. It's going to be amazing. The set you will see again on some videos, and we're just going to have a great time celebrating the gift of friendship and community. So awesome. hope to see you there. Awesome, yeah. awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. See Take care.